Hey guys, Bob here from Old Man Revolution, where I motivate, educate, and inspire men to eat like men, train like men, and live a life that they have designed themselves. And speaking of an older gentleman who lived a life that he designed himself, who ate like a man, who trained like a man, Sylvester Stallone, let's discuss some of the reactions to my videos on his diet, okay? Because you know, I have my own diets now, I have my own workouts now, but I certainly respect those who went before me. I certainly researched those who went before me. I certainly tried out the diets and the workouts of those who went before me. And every time I do a video like um, Larry Scott, the, the man who won the very first and the second Mr. Olympia contests, okay? Um, Sylvester Stallone, need I say more, Iconic Body and Rocky, all of them, okay? Iconic Body and Rambo, all of them. And to this day, he is in incredible shape. You know, Sylvester Stallone, back when he was making the Rocky movies, back when he was making the, um, you know, the Rambo movies, he was like in his 40s, you know, the old days with Tango and Cash, uh, you know, with uh, the specialist, you know, I think the specialist, he had an incredible physique. You didn't see a lot of it, but he had an incredible physique in the specialist. The guy was in his 40s back then. He was born in 1946, and he didn't really come out big until like the 80s. So he was, quote, an old man when he was, you know, had the most iconic physique like ever, okay? You know, compared him to Dolph Lundgren, compare him to Van Damme, compare him to Bruce Lee, compare him to Jet Li, you know, compare him to, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was legitimately one of the best bodybuilders ever to have lived. He won, you know, uh, many contests. He had the record for the most Mr. Olympia wins for a very long time. And to this day, if you consider what he did for the sport of bodybuilding, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, you know, not just as a bodybuilder itself, but what he did for the sport, the life he lived, you know, he is probably the greatest bodybuilder of all time. And still, even bodybuilders would say that they really appreciate Sylvester Stallone's physique over Schwarzenegger's physique, even though they are bodybuilders and Schwarzenegger was a bodybuilder. So why is it that, you know, how is it that Sylvester Stallone has this incredible physique? How is it that, you know, even his in his 40s, he had a physique that, you know, Von Damme was in his 20s when he first started making movies, when he made like Bloodsport, for instance. How is it that 40 some odd year old Sylvester Stallone in, you know, Rocky Three, Rocky Four, Rambo Two, Rambo Three had a more iconic physique than 20-year-old Van Damme in Bloodsport. And, you know, there are only a few things that you can basically, you know, blame this on, so to speak. The way a person eats, the way a person trains, the genetics a person has, and, you know, the supplements, both legal and illegal, nutritional and pharmaceutical. So why is it that every single time I do a video about, you know, Larry Scott's bulking or cutting diet, everything, I, every time I do a, a video about one of Sylvester Stallone's diets, people say, oh yeah, you forgot to talk about the roids, man. Like somebody just basically said, you know, yesterday um, in one of the comments on, on one of my videos, he's like, I'm a big fan of Stallone, but he had Anavar, testosterone, HGH to help him. And he actually like wrote them all in big letters, like he's yelling through the internet. You dumb son of a fucking bitch. How stupid are these fucking internet trolls? So what you're saying is Sylvester Stallone is not in the shape he was in because of his insane work ethic, his insane training, and his insane diet, and his genetics. He is in incredible shape because he is the only person in all of Hollywood in the 80s that was on steroids. The only difference is the steroids. He was on steroids and because of that, he had the most iconic physique of the 80s. Because between 1979 and 1991, the only single person in all of Hollywood who was on steroids was fucking Sylvester Sloan. You fucking moron, okay? If everybody, okay, is on fucking gear, okay? If everybody at the top has good genetics, the only thing that separates one person who just stands out is his diet and his training. Are you telling me that fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger was not on motherfucking steroids? Seriously, you motherfucking dumbass internet trolls, are you so fucking stupid that you think Sylvester Stallone had the most iconic physique of the 1980s because he was the only person in all of Hollywood that was on steroids. So 
Fucking Schwarzenegger was not on steroids. Von Damme was not on gear. Motherfucking Dolph Lundgren was not on shit. Seriously, you're that motherfucking stupid. Lou Ferrigno was not on fucking steroids. How fucking stupid. Do you people stand around and hit each other over the heads with baseball bats before you make these fucking stupid troll comments? The fact of the matter is this. Yes, Arnold, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Von, I don't know about Von Damme. The guy weighed 180 pounds. Who cares? But Schwarzenegger, you know, Stallone, they both admitted to using gear. I mean, fucking Larry Scott, the very first Mr. Olympia. You think he's the only person that was on fucking steroids. As a matter of fact, somebody asked Larry Scott back in the day when they were completely legal, go to your doctor and get some D-ball. He literally was asked, you know, are you on the Ball? And he said, of course, isn't everybody? And everybody was. So if Larry Scott was like way above everybody else, as the first, you know, two Mr. Olympias. Why did he blow the fuck out of everybody else? He just blew everybody else away. Blew out the entire competition. He was just so far ahead of them. It wasn't because he was the only person taking Diana Ball. You know, Stallone was had an incredible physique when he was back in the 80s. I mean, to this day, but back, you know, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rambo 2, Rambo 3, because... You know, read his book. Read his book, Sly Moves. He tells you not to do his workouts and not to do his diets because it was so extreme. I mean, we're talking about he would, like, when he was doing the Rambo and the Rocky movies, he'd be jumping rope for, you know, every day. He'd be doing hundreds of pull-ups, hundreds of sit-ups, hundreds of push-ups every day, plus weights, plus, you know, get in the ring and do some sparring if he's getting ready to, you know, to do a Rocky movie. Then he said he'd be out at a party you know, some Hollywood party, or maybe he lived in Miami at the time, and he would just go home at like 11 o'clock at night, just leave the party, go home, and start doing push-ups and start doing jump rope and shit like this. He would live on like, hey, I eat a little bit of chicken and some, you know, some beets. I think that was his diet for, you know, for the preparation to get really lean for Ram Rambo 3. He said he ate chicken and beets twice a day. You know, he would go times where he would just eat tuna out of the can, okay? I did this diet for three days. I hate tuna. I did this diet for three days and it sucked, you know? Like I said, I mean, he went through times where he would just eat chicken for a, you know, for a period of time. And the training he did, he became rocky because he trained like a boxer. You know, he didn't train like a bodybuilder and then get lean. I mean, he literally was in there, you know, hitting the mitts. He was literally in there doing jump rope, doing calisthenics, doing weights. He trained like a boxer and therefore he looked like a boxer. And that is the reason why Sylvester Stallone has the most iconic physique of the 80s. You know, bodybuilders like the IFBB gave him some kind of a award, like an unofficial award. They said he had the body, you know, the body of the decade of the 80s. You know, like I said, people these days, even if they're bodybuilders themselves, they say he has a better physique than Schwarzenegger. You know, of course, all of this is, you know, personal preference. But the fact of the matter is he is not the only person that was on steroids back in the 80s, back in Hollywood. So obviously, if he has a different result... You know, like I said, everybody at the top of the game, whether it's sports, you know, some kind of a appearance physique competition, like being a Hollywood superstar, everybody at the top has good genetics. So you can't say he had better genetics than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a shit ton bigger than him. He was probably like fucking 60 pounds, 80 pounds heavier than him. If, you know, he was like Schwarzenegger, let's say 225 or whatever. And, you know, Stallone was like 165 in Rocky III. So, you know, so they all had great genetics. They were all on gear. The only difference is how you eat and how you train. And like I said, that is the reason why. So if you want to sit in your ass and say, yeah, you know, if I was on gear, I'd be sitting on my ass and look better than Sylvester Stallone, but I'm not going to stoop to that level. That's fine. You're a moron and nobody fucking believes you. Okay. The fact of the matter is, you know, like I said, at this point, Every little thing makes a big difference, and if genetics are all about the same, and if gear use is all about the same, or he probably even used less gear, okay, than, than Schwarzenegger. I guarantee you he used less gear than Schwarzenegger. It basically just comes down to your training and your diet, and if you want to ignore that, you know, at your own peril. You know, basically discount him as just being on gear, and that's the only reason. And go back and sit on the sofa, that's fine. And that is why I love internet trolls, because you people make up 99% of the population. 
1% of the population is willing to actually get his ass off the sofa, go to the gym, go to school, start a business, do this, do that, you know, talk to a woman, approach a woman. Hey, I like you. Let's talk. I want to get to know you. 99% of the people just take what they can get, whether it's a job, a physique, you know, you sit in your ass all day and you hope you get in good shape, but you don't do anything about it. So you just take what you can get as opposed to saying, I want to look like this. I want to be in this shape. I want to be this strong, this fast. I'm going to run, whatever play this sport and come up with a training and a diet routine that will get you there. But you don't, you just sit on your ass and you take what you can get. You know, you're not like, I want this kind of a woman. What do I have to make my life look like to get her? You know, can I be fat and have this woman? No. So I need to get in shape. You know, can I be broke and have this woman? No. So you got to get in shape. You know, can I be an asshole? No. So you need to work on your personality. You need to work on the way you dress. You know, how do I get this job? Well, you have to have a law degree to be a lawyer. Great. Go to school, go to law school, become a lawyer and then get, become a lawyer. You know, whereas if you're just sitting here like, well, you know, I have a GED, what kind of job can I get? I'm sitting on my ass on the sofa, what kind of woman can I get? I'm sitting on my ass on the sofa eating ice cream, what kind of physique can I get? You're taking what you can get and then you are you know, using this as an excuse. Like, well, I'm not on steroids and that's why. Yeah, you're not on steroids, that's why you don't look like Stallone. Also, you eat like shit and you don't do anything goddamn all day. You're lucky if you shower once a week. So those are also parts of why you don't look like Stallone. Not just the gear use, the fact you don't work out, you don't diet, and you fucking don't give a shit about anything. Those also have a little bit to do with the fact you don't look like Stallone. So I love it because like I said, 99% of the people are pieces of shit like that that don't do anything all day except for make excuses. And because of that, when you get off of your ass and go to the gym a little bit, when you look a little bit after what you eat, when you care a little bit about how you dress, you immediately shoot up past the 99%. You know, that's why it's actually easy to become one of the part of the 1% of the population because 99% doesn't do shit. So anything you do, you're light years ahead of them. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe and also click on that little bell icon so you get notified when I put up a new video. Any questions, any comments, just post them below. I love interacting with you guys in the comment section. Even the trolls, I always get a kick out of you guys. And uh, aside from that, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.